So the government has many secret organizations, but how many can we know that are real? Tonight we're talking about one of the ones that may be highly debated, even though there's multiple movies about it, The Men in Black. And we're about to get into that right now. I'm your host, Mike. I'm Joe. And I'm Casey. So, anyways, for those that haven't heard about the Men in Black, which is highly unlikely, um, it's pretty much the same as the fucking movies. It's a secret organization created by the government to keep alien activity under wraps and under control. Yeah, I didn't know what it was about. So I just watched that new one with Chris Hemsworth and just kept fast forwarding the movie on mute to all the times he gave that cute ass fuck me smile. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so i have no yeah, idea what the yeah, plot yeah. is other than <laughs> no. he looks damn sexy in the role <laughs> <laughs> so like i was saying earlier it's pretty much the same as the movies so you know secret organization show up anytime there's alien activity and you know cover that shit up but generally what would end up happening with the men in black is they would show up unannounced usually in you know black business suits and warn people to give up their research on UFOs or, you know, face blackmail, death, what have you, just consequences in general. They should have been (laughs) men in pajamas. You know how fucking funny that would be? Just seeing a bunch of dudes in fucking pajamas. Should have been a (laughs) bunch of guys in overalls, men in straps. But like in many (laughs) cases, the men in black had seen aliens and in, you know, some accounts, you know, what they thought were demonic supernaturals. Nonetheless, they fucking still cover that shit up. And, uh, you know, you probably think, you know, why would the fucking government want to suppress this or, or any information of UFOs? But the theory goes that it's because aliens are closer to us than we all think. You know, they're here among us. They've been among us for quite a while. And, but, you know, they're so among us that, you know, they might actually be everywhere. And if ordinary citizens realize just how real the threat of the aliens were, there would be a mass panic and breakdown of social order. So that's why the men in black exist is just to kind of shut that shit down. Make sure everything. The only people that would have a problem with aliens is the religious people. (laughs) And that's just if they, and then either that, or they would just say that's God. And then that would just, they would just twist that to their own religion. But that's what the stupid thing is about that. Like, I, religious people always find an excuse of how this happens and that. It's like, oh, the world's ending. Oh, actually, it was slightly off. It's going to be this many years from now. Now it's going to be this many years from now. Like, they don't fucking actually... We weren't using the old Roman idea. calendars. Time, we were using our time, so our calculations were off. So it's all whatever. So it's like if an alien came from the fucking sky, like, especially, well, modern day, it'd be like, nah, computer effects. That's yeah, but... Uh, from their TikToks. It's stupid because how many times have they said, yeah, there actually was fucking whatever things and people just, nobody reacted to it. It's like, ah, I fucking knew it. Or it's like, eh, whatever. Oh, it's fake. I mean, fuck, we used to burn people at the, or burn women at the stakes because they were smart. (laughs) But like, even, even though they were meant to shut all all this shit down. well missed. No. There's, there's still no like. I don't know, no, like, real proof to know if they were actually about because of how secretive they were. And they, from, from, Did you just from have a par- thought? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, Burn but, her. Uh, <laughs> Burn her on the stake. But she yeah, but told what, me no. <laughs> whether the men in black are real or not, you know, they are part of a secret government agency, and they may not have entirely kept that secret all that well. Because, I mean, there's been a f- couple fucking movies. Yeah, that, I'm just, I'm, I'm not doubting, but, uh, like, the existence of it. I'm just saying that, um... I think it's asinine that at one point they believed it would cause that much panic considering all the other ridiculous shit people believed in, which is fairies. um, But uh, apparently as there's which fairies. Yeah. (laughs) Apparently as all the, the like Roswell shit was coming to a close and world war two was coming close during the cold war when everybody was suspicious of everything. That's when, the men in black became like a real thing. Like people were just like, Oh yeah, that shit exists. You know, and they're closing in the cold war. They're just, you know, there's multiple reports of a, of people seeing aliens and then a mysterious stranger showing up in a black car 
black suit, sunglasses, just like in Men in Black the movie, and shutting that shit down. And then the anti uh, like war hippies of the nineteen sixties or whatever. It's like, no man, stop that. Ant- I'm anti not liking our neighbors and the solar system, man. Men in black, more like men in whack, man. <laughs> Just fucking stop, man. Stop hiding it, man. They're creatures too, man. They have feelings. <laughs> the, the men in black also fall in line with that. Have you guys heard of the Majestic 12? I, I have not actually. That sounds like an old school, like 1940 superhero group that would have got wiped it, out. It, it sounds like a fucking Western to me, like the fucking, uh, you know. It sounds like a flambo- a very flamboyant Western. <laughs> like the Hateful Eight, the Ridiculous Seven, the fucking, uh, what's the main one all those were based on? The, uh, uh, fucking something 12. Yeah. Did you say the Majestic The Magnificent 12? 12 or something like that. Did yeah. you say the Majestic? Or 11. Or Majestic. Yeah, it, what you're thinking of movie? Ocean's 11, I think. Ocean's but no, like they made a remake of it's it with Chris Pratt. They made a remake of it with Chris Pratt, and what was that? The fucking oh, I don't know if anybody's uh, speaking of very flamboyant. Um, if anybody's ever read the um, the Django and um, uh, Zorro comic, I have not. Uh, I read the first issue of it. And it's actually made by fucking Quentin Tarantino was a part of it. I don't know how That's active he was dope. with it, but um, he um, Zorro, whoever the the fucking his non Zorro persona, um, he got like Antonio whatever. Banderas. No, <laughs> <laughs> he was like these uh, like cowboy dudes, like whatever. They were talking shit to him because how like flamboyant he was and everything. And like something he said, he made a reference about peacocks or whatever. And they show their like colors. It's like a threat kind of thing. I don't know. It was badass. I can't remember. I'm butchering it, but it was really badass. Like rebuttaled to them, assuming because of his fucking whatever flashy like nature that he was weak and he wasn't. I think he beat their ass with like an umbrella or something stupid. I can't fucking remember. (laughs) It's not stupid because it was cool, but. I'm butchering it and I might be wrong about the, like the details of it, but I, he made a fucking, um, a peacock reference and it was pretty mm. badass. So like when I say flamboyant, I don't mean it in a derogative way, but <laughs> also the name that Casey said would sound like they were very, uh, majestic. Bob. Yeah. They were, uh, they're very <laughs> flamboyant cowboys. <laughs> Doesn't mean they're less threatening or anything. Just yeah, well, means that they uh they, they have uh, like the uh, pom poms at the edge of their um spurs on their cowboy boots. But the they might be supposed to be like a branch of the Majestic Twelve. Because the Majestic that, Twelve is a group of uh scientists, military leaders, government officials. It was uh formed in nineteen uh forty seven by President Truman to facilitate what? the recovery and and investigation of alien spacecraft. Quick, quick question. Does yes. this have to do with Operation Paperclip? Hey, well, I don't. Yeah, well, yeah, actually, well, actually, actually, probably would tie into Paperclip. We actually, yeah. that one's going to be on our next season. So about this Magnificent 12. Oh, uh, I was just saying that's, this is what the group was called. That's supposed to be like in charge of like the scientists, the government agents, uh, like agents and stuff. I think so an, another Black government would, organization in charge of another government organization is what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, it's like, it's like a shadow government, basically. Hmm. In that charge keeps, of an actual government organization? In charge of aliens. Hmm. Finding those little so, slimy gray bastards. Yeah, from what you were saying slimy. earlier, you have an interesting story about the men in black that you wanted to tell us. <laughs> so, <clears throat> this guy's working on a... Uh, like a consultant on this uh, UFO story. And uh, he gets a phone call from this guy saying he wants to discuss the what he's... Uh... Oh, fuck, man, dude. He wants to discuss what uh, he was just talking, like what he's been consulted on, right? And mm-hmm. then just only a few minutes ago... <laughs> Jesus Christ, what is that? <laughs> a few minutes go by, and uh, if... <laughs> If the listeners want to know, it's a Teletubby type thing. I don't, I don't know how to explain it's it. It's the yellow gonna... tubby, 
Teletubby, which has a, you know, a, a, a pole on his head. And then the red tub- Teletubby, which has a circle on his head. And they're, the, the, the pole is in the circle. <laughs> oh, head man. deep. No, okay, so this guy just shows up a couple minutes later at his front door. Guy's wearing a suit, a tie. He has very unusual facial expression or appearances. He has no hair or eyebrows and extremely pale. The Hopkins dog, the guy's whose house it is at, his dog begins like barking all crazy. And uh this is the this is how the story goes. So the guy, the man the well, the man in black, he uh informed Hopkins there are two coins in his pocket which is correct, and asked him to remove ones. Hopkins complied, held the coin, a shiny new penny in the palm of his hands. They might be told Hopkins to watch the coin closely. After a few moments, the coin took out a silvery appearance and appeared to be going out of focus and began to fade and eventually disappeared altogether. The MIB informed Hopkins that the coin would never be seen on this plane again and then he inquired as to whether Hopkins was familiar with the alleged UFO abductee Barney Hill, which we will talk about at some point as well. Um, Hopkins replied that he heard of Hill, but was under the impression that he died. And he's like, and not, he's like, just died in the past at some point. And then the yeah. MIB told him, he's like, yeah, he's, uh, that's correct. Barney did have a, uh, a heart, uh, just like you no longer have a coin, it should be noted. Oh, well, it's, it's uh, I guess Barney Hill died of a, a hemorrhage in his head, I guess, or the real guy, but like a brain aneur- aneurysm, a cere- cerebral, is that how you say that? Cerebral, cerebral yeah. is a uh, brain, yes, yeah, so, yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, in the head. And then, uh, he suggested that uh, Hopkins destroy all his evidence that he had with the CUP. UFO case. And then I guess he got scared and he ended up burning all his shit and destroying all of his evidence that he Naturally. compiled together. Yeah. All this and then uh, I guess that guy was never seen again. The MIB guy. Hmm. So why so much about Barney Hill and not much, uh, much about Barney Rubble? I just, I thought it was uh, funny. <laughs> Barney Rubble's stone, dude. He's like, he's like, take these <laughs> coins out of my pocket, out of your pocket. And one of them's going to disappear. <laughs> Alien. That's that, yeah. That, that's how. That's how he convinced him that he was an MIB agent. He's like, look what I can do. <laughs> I can do a magic trick <laughs> that like any fucking person who knows sleight of hand can do. It's, so it's I, like I witch got a, shit, but yeah, extraterrestrials. I got another another one. Um. So at one point, Doctor Albert K. Bender. He was a well, well-written, extremely intelligent researcher who founded the International Flying Saucer Bureau. In 1955, his research was about to yield serious fruit as he prepared to unveil a paper that would prove the, the U.S. government had, had covered up proof of UFOs. He planned to publish his findings in Space Review. That was until he was visited by the men in black. Bender claims that three men dressed all in black visited him and his home and warned him against pursuing the topics of UFOs any further. The men left Bender scared for his life, and he immediately shut down all of his research for his new bureau that he had founded. Many people who knew his claim that Bender had... Many people who knew him claim that Bender was a changed man after this encounter. He later works... Ah! His later works rambled almost unreliably and he seemed to live his life in constant anxiety and fear. He reported to still receive mysterious phone... He, he reported that he still receives mysterious phone call... Mysterious phone calls with nobody on the other end until the end of 2002. Yeah. Um, I just want to say one thing. I <laughs> Actually, kind of think about it, the men in black thing, like the, the attire, it sounds ridiculous. Because you want to be inconspicuous, you would, you know, try to blend in. It's like when everybody thinks ninjas wear like fucking masks and everything else. And it's like, no, we dress like farmers and other stuff. Like they would blend in with their surroundings. They wouldn't yeah, be but, fucking but, shrouded in some kind of fucking obvious. Yeah. Attire. But if you show up in a fucking like black Escalade looking suits on fucking looking like a government official, people, you're going to just show up already intimidating people. 
Yeah, but it's like that's not if you're trying to be inconspicuous and not draw are they, attention. Are they are they trying to be inconspicuous though, or are they trying to intimidate? Well, I mean, I, if, if it was such a big secret and they did all this stuff, I mean, they would have to blend in with their fucking whatever. It's not like you guys. They might be here, just a bunch of pussies. Honestly, they they always say they go around like telling the these dates. Mo- well, they tell these motherfuckers not to tell these stories, but somehow these stories keep coming out, and these people are just fine walking around still. Yeah, so, so apparently they couldn't do their one fucking job was to be like yeah, inconspicuous. They, you know, they cut the funding to the murders. How do you, how do you cover something <laughs> all, up all the be funding obvious? Went to the Clintons. How, how, do you cover, how, how can you cover up and be stealth like stealthy, but also always be seen? Like that makes no sense. Did it's like guys, they're always seen. It's a, that day shift movie. Jamie Foxx didn't run around and fucking vampire hunter attire. He dressed like a fucking pool boy. And fucking other shit. Like he just uh, like an everyday fucking person. Don't draw. Fl- he literally says to the guy, it's like, don't draw attention to yourself. Don't wear a suit. Yeah. Do you it's know like, the- you don't, why would you, why would you, it's like men in black. It's like they're walking around in the, in the movies, men in black. It's like they're walking around in suits, but then again, they're not trying to whatever. There's this whole aliens living on earth kind of fucking whatever thing. But it's like, dude, you're not being like fucking. You're not being very stealthy. You're supposed to stop the general public from fucking uh, seeing all this shit, but yet you're always spotted because yeah, you're a bunch of dudes dude. in black seats and uh, suits with nice ass black fucking cars. The, the feds show up and they actually look like how they're purported to look in movies like feds. You can kind of shoot a chicken when they show up. You're gonna be like, oh, god damn it. Yeah, but then it's, you draw attention to yourself. The, the, what the job is to not draw attention to the situation. You'd be smarter than that. But I mean, then again, we're dealing with the U.S. government, and they're not very smart. So yeah. Also, these people could be showing up in the middle of the fucking night. Yeah, but they, like that's a not goddamn their raid. Thing. They're just in, you know. Everybody's everybody's little fucking uh, stories. It's like a bunch of dudes in black showed up. Well, it's never a bunch of dudes. It shows you just two. Yeah, it's one to th- to I believe four. From what yeah, I heard. so they're not very inconspicuous, though. But the point is, yeah, but, it's not but, to alarm well, the general people, public, I mean, but you're what alarming it, the general public. I mean, they could just look like Jehovah's Witnesses going door to door. Yeah, but it's like the fact is, it's like all these oh, stories, yeah. and it's like these guys are it, their job is to not fucking create an uproar, but they're creating an uproar. Like it makes no fucking sense. It's just a different uproar. It doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Like that just doesn't make any sense to me. I'm not saying that there wasn't somebody trying to cover shit up, but I think they would be a little more discreet than that to have several stories. You, you'd hope, was but saying we really they have weren't that actually doing their government. <laughs> no, I don't. But then that also believes like if you believe that, then you also believe that half the conspiracies are stupid that involve the U.S. government because they're too stupid to be able to get away with anything. But uh, most Americans are fucking morons. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say most Americans. I said just most people. You got another, uh, another, another tale for us, um, if you will. A tale of two aliens. Oh, now listen, these two aliens. So they, this is a, they got into this. This guy was sleeping in his house, right? And it's middle of the night. Sees a bright, flashy lights, and these two entities appear in his room, and. uh one enters from behind and one enters in the front. Hold up now. Do I need to start playing some And then uh, they start Eiffel Towering this motherfucker. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> hands interlocked. Building a bridge, motherfucker. No. Yeah. <laughs> now who, d- who did you oh, just shit, who did you just talk about? I don't even know where I'm at right now. Oh, my shit. Harold Dahl. The Murray Island Incident. Harold Dahl and his sons were salvaging wood on a fishing boat when they uh, saw six donut-shaped... Wait, wait, wait. uh, Can you repeat that, please? It's not Raul Dahl. It's not the guy who did fucking Willy Wonka. Harold (laughs) Dahl. Wait, but but I mean, what what did you say about unleashing wood? Is that what you said? No, I said they were (laughs) salvaging... 
I said there was salvaging logs on their uh, fishing boat. I'll, I'll niche some oh. wood in your ass, Joe, if you want. And then that's when they saw the, the donut-shaped <laughs> aircrafts flying above them. Well, yeah, dude. Anybody would have wood with donut-shaped anything. <laughs> you know, gotta get that hole, son. <laughs> Give me that brown. Just donut. looking up to the sky, be like, "Oh God, oh I'm hard as a rock right now." <laughs> you see that? That kind of looks like just a hole. But I guess yeah, what year was this, Casey? Casey, what year was this? Let's say eighty-four. Yeah, let oh, me yeah. see. Yeah, men definitely were just fucking holes back then. <laughs> I mean, look at that. <laughs> well, no, that I don't know if that's the date because I'm really I'm just looking at this document, so I'm just trying to see if it has a date on there because it doesn't say right here. It says it says sixty-seven it's BC. Five no. five three October fifty-three October first. If it's anything before the late nineties, so it's, it's guys 53. are just humping anything with a hole. Bottom it's, left-hand corner, Casey. It says fifty-three <laughs> dot October first. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, so it's in. October 1st, 1953. So they see they see these ships dropping molten waste into the lake, killing uh, their dog, injuring oh, the that, sun. And a few days see? after talking about the stuff with his boss, uh, he was visited by a mysterious man in all black. The man urged him not to discuss the encounter. And not long after, he was also visited by Air Force agents who were, were said to be on a mission to gather information and then a uh, doll story got the attention of law enforcement agencies and it ended up with a letter to the FBI on a oh the FBI wrote a report about it and uh I'm not going to read that whole report cuz I hate reading this all typed out fucking Oh yeah, it's hard to read anyways. I see the pictures. Like we should just post it. So are you saying the men in are you or, hold on. The men in black weren't you know, a part I, of like FBI shit? They weren't aware of them. I'll I'll read the I'll read this uh typewriter bullshit. It says, Dear sir, the following in general are the facts regarding the flying Oh, this disc. is redacted too. Yeah, the flying, flying disc that started by redacted, which subsequently resulted in news stories by the Tacoma Times. That something statesman and the Chicago Times that a B-25 carrying Army intelligence officers was shot down or sabotaged over Kelso, Washington on August 1st, 1947 because it was carrying fuck goddamn blurry Some. bullshit. Is that Rose? Carrying something flying disc fragments. The original story, as related by Redacted, was to the effect that Redacted was patrolling in in his boat near Maury Island, Washington, sighted six flying discs, one of which fluttered to the earth and disintegrated, showering his boat with fragments, which caused some damage to the boat and killed his dog. Redacted wrote a letter to Redacted in Cliff Davis Company, which publishes fantastic adventure magazine in chicago sending him fragments of the flying disc and relating the above story redacted and relating relating to the above story redacted requested trans radio news in chicago to verify the story related by redacted telegraphed by redacted confirming redacted story redacted then engaged redacted in boise idaho who was was first reported citing that flying disc and whom Redacted had previously made a contract a contract for a story regarding the flying disc to come to Dude, Tacoma and check the bam. story. It's been a, related it's, it's, by Redacted. Redacted came to Tacoma, Washington, July 30th, 1947, and arranged for a meeting the following day, July 31st, with Redacted in the room 502 in Withdrop Hotel, Tacoma, Washington. Also called to attend the meeting, Redacted United Air, Airlines pilot who had also reported seeing the flying disc fragments and army intelligence to attend. Like, that is, like, so pretty much, I read it all. Some dude, he saw a fucking thing, burst in the fire while he was fishing, like, killed his dog, fucked up his boat. He sent that shit off. He said it was dropping molten lava. Yeah, it fucking fucked up. And he sent the fragments of this thing that had killed his dog and fucked up his boat. 
to a newspaper in Chicago, and then they did a story about it, and then later on, he went to do more story about it, which he got additional evidence from a United Airlines pilot. It said United Airlines, or just an airlines pilot, um, to where that they also had evidence of the same thing he had. But, like, a lot of shit has been redacted, so, you know... Um, that's crazy though that it said Boise, uh, Idaho. So that just makes me uh, have reason to believe there's uh, aliens there, and that Casey has actually been replaced by a scroll. Scroll Nick. <laughs> so instead of Casey, Olaf it's actually Neto. Car. It's actually Car Doc McGarden. <laughs> yeah. oh, they call me Casey, but my real name is. <laughs> <laughs> my real name is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyways, I think that's good for right now. Let's go to break. We'll get back to more stories when we come back. Thank you for listening to The Conspiracy Outpost. We upload videos every week alternating with our D&D podcast. So check in on both of those. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and get in on our polls and fucking comment. Have some fun with it. Thanks. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, from the far reaches of the universe, Matthew has... Joined us, Matthew's back. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. he's been gone. He's been gone for many moons, but he's back now. Well, we well, yeah, the the one in this universe died of uh, monkeypox, but the next one, is, <laughs> the one I am now, is pretty good. Pretty he, he, and he, yes, he's back just to talk about our fancy men who wear black suits and black ties, because that's what he's into. So yeah, I'd, I had just read off that redacted story, and now for a photo, for the story of a photograph that was taken in Soloway Firth by Jim Templeton. Every time so on this specific day, Jim Templeton was shocked to discover a figure in the background of a photo of his daughter. He figured that it was the camera's view and not the photo, and he, but still, he had no idea where it came from. But then he sent it to Kodak, and the film was verified by Kodak, and, and Temp Templeton's story went public. Not long after, he was visited by two government agents who referred to themselves as number nine and number ten. They demanded to see the site of the photo and questioned Templeton about the event. When Templeton told them he didn't see the figure personally, the men became angry and stormed out of the field, never to be seen again. Templeton was later contacted by two employees at a missile launch pad in Australia who claimed that they saw the two figures that resembled the man in the daughter's photo on launch pad security footage. Apparently, the missiles at the site in Australia had been produced only 20 miles away from the field where Templeton took the photo. So he saw... <laughs> so a Kodak confirmed it's like, yep, that's aliens. <laughs> no, no, Kodak confirmed it was an anomaly in the film. It was like there was actually something there. It wasn't a film anomaly. Kodak's like, I assure you, that's not Photoshop. What's that? It's something that comes way later in time. Yeah. And then also, like, Templeton, dude, I'll show you the photo real quick. Hold up. Uh, so it it right adds now. up because Templeton, the last name, that's also the boss baby's last name. And I believe everything in that film. So this for sure. 100%. Right. Yes, <laughs> it is. I it's like some, it think, could also be like some ghost shit, you know? But also, so boss is, baby got arrested from killing a, so, a cast member. It is the men in black tied to anything that's like, say, like high order stuff? Yeah, kind of. They're a secret organization. Um, They're not the CIA. That goes around and covers up anything that has to do with UFOs or aliens. Yeah, they're is inconspicuous, but they're not. Like exactly because how they the always movies get are, where they show up, they cover the shit up, and they apprehend the alien. That yeah, that's it. Except I don't know how many aliens they apprehended. You know, other than the I brought Mexican up the variety. fact that. Uh, I brought up the well, fact that ninjas don't run around in robes with a mask. I don't think we. Well, I don't think we have the technology to apprehend an alien. So I don't. Think yeah, that's but going possible. around and and suppressing witnesses who've seen alien things. That's, that's easy. Scope. That yeah, might that's, be different. Yeah, that's more of what they're said. The whole like taking aliens. But apparently they didn't technology. suppress many of as them. As far as because, I know, uh, that, as far as I know, that's just in the movies. But, uh, but uh, they, they apparently didn't. Been, yeah, that's true too. But also, um, you have to let someone not just go kill and them. spread the word because because um, now just prove if, if you just start whacking people who are saying they they saw aliens, yeah, but you all these people them. start ending up dead. 
They're going to be like, yeah, oh, yeah, these, the government's definitely hiding some shit if all these people are just going to end well, up dead. On yeah, but, they're, yeah, but the you kill them before they can get that. the word out, right? There's poor I don't people think who have the government's the hiding pants. aliens, though. So. You would Not leave anymore. alive crazy whatever people. Maybe maybe they want the little bit of the truth to be trickled out for a little bit of misinformation, but in the hidden in the real information. I'm just saying, if if you're an incons- if you're a group trying to hide and cover up stuff, you wouldn't have an outfit. Like there wouldn't be a fucking yeah. company uniform for people that are hiding things. That's you the can't dumbest blend thing in with I've ever heard. High. It's yeah, hard that's to what blend I said. And a black uh, run, roll up in an Escalade and just be like, <laughs> "No, I'm just kidding." If but, someone, uh, yeah, you know their Secret Service. You know that's suspicious. Yeah. but and then it's you like, can't. You know, how Men in Black like presses their little camera where they're like, "Oh, everyone forgot their memory." Yeah. yeah. What about everyone else watching you guys do that shit? They're like, "Oh yeah, yeah remember March thirtieth? Oh yeah, March thirtieth. Oh yeah, Men in Black ruined it and they erased everyone's memory. There's some <laughs> sketch." And even if they didn't say shit, what about someone's Twitter account that's just like, oh, Men in Black just rolled in for fucking... Elon Musk's plane is over fucking Nevada. Okay, Men in Black just rolled over in like this and did that. It's, it's not undetectable. It's like, it's easily said, so... Um, yeah, yeah that's, I don't that's think what a lot saying. of these reports are like back before the 80s. Yeah, but but that's what I was trying to say before. Where they it's now? Like, yeah, they're, they're telling these disbanded. people to be quiet, but what about all the other people? It's like, yeah, I remember. They, uh, they, they just, they just uh, intimidate them online now. Yeah. Yeah. They cyberbully them sense. until they kill themselves. What, what's the Clinton game about? They were just like, just kill uh, them. Shoot school up. Well, no, it makes no sense yeah. because it's like you're intimidating a group, but remember all the other people that notice you. You're being noticeable to multiple yeah. people, not just the people that witnessed the, cr- like, the That's, crime. Witness. You know, yeah. It, it yeah. is a bit far-fetched, but... Uh, let, Same let's with get the action back to a couple nowadays. of stories. <laughs> Can I say, like, hold on, real quick. You know, action movies nowadays, like, a shit can blow up, and uh, oh, yeah. within, like, destroy- three hours, no one responds. Yeah, like, destroy a whole no, city no. block, and people are just like, yeah. what happened? And Nothing no one happened. knows what's happening in three hours. Realistically, if there's Dude. a firecracker that goes off, a cop is on it within seconds. Yeah. All right? Realistically, was, they know what a, it, you look like. like. It's... In- they found a stick of dynamite and like within an hours we everyone fucking knew, me and you knew. Yo, well, that was my neighbor. Yeah, that, was my neighbor. No, no. that was my neighbor. I know. That was my neighbor. It it is in big in bigger cities, there is an estimated time of their arrival. Okay. So like within like eight to fifteen minutes, probably. But but also still it would not you wouldn't still be on the run after something exploded. Like if you seen a uh what's the movie with Kevin Smith and um uh, Ice Cube? It's like shit's exploding and everything, and they're still off doing something. It's like no, they would have they would have apprehended you by now. You guys are leaving out explosions everywhere you go. I yeah, think that's the right it, movie I'm thinking of. It's, it's regardless. Yeah, the explosions. It doesn't take them 24 hours to respond to a fucking exactly. explosion. Exactly. They're there within minutes. They're there within mm-hmm. the hour. So there's no way that after all that shit happened. Because loud fucking noises. Nobody ever thinks about that, except for video games. <laughs> Apparently, even in video games, like Grand Theft Auto, if you use a silencer and you kill somebody, doesn't matter. Cops are on you anyways. It's like, what's the point I'm, of I'm fucking sorry, silencer? That loud noise was all I thought of was brick tannin. Oh, anyway, continue with the thing. Yeah, let's cause... let's get back to the stories. Um, Casey, I believe you got another one for us. Yeah. So this one's uh, this one's about old Paul Miller. So this this guy, this guy Paul Miller, he was he was out on a well, he was coming back from a hunting trip, and he saw a uh, a luminous disc in the sky, and he said the disc landed in an empty field, and two humanoids As emerged usual. from the craft. Miller then fired his gun at them, and he believed to have injured one, and then he fled down the road to his car, but. After he got there, he realized that he had lost time, and his time was like he he lost three hours. So oh, three so he, hours later, either liar. he was possibly liar. abducted or he got hit yeah. by a neuralizer. Liar! Is this and where then, the story neuralizer comes wait, from? Wait, wait, let me finish the story, hold, Matthew, hold, and then you can uh, hold up. You can go poke your holes in it, but yeah. So so he went back to his Air Force job the next day, and. And upon entering, he was immediately confronted by three men in black suits. They told him that they had his file, despite having 
told nobody about the event. The men, the men said that they knew all about it, and they mentioned the encounter would be best forgotten. And uh, he, he goes on to say, they seem to know everything about me, where I worked, my name, everything. They also knew uh, questions about his experiences as if they already knew the answers. Miller was terrified, and he came forward with the stories years later. So I'm just going to say, actually, Casey, they, back from what you were saying before. Did they actually try to suppress his story, or were they just there like, what the fuck happened? No, like the next day, so they showed up and they're like, uh, he, he like he was coming in through the doors and they just surrounded him. They're like, oh, we got your file. We know everything that happened. He's coming and from work like, hey, like bro. Yeah, they already they knew everything. Were they just confirming the story, though? Or were no, they, they already knew. They already knew the story, even though because he didn't, didn't tell anybody. I didn't hear anything about suppressing the information. What if were they just doing a field report? They just told him the story should be just be forgotten. Okay. He never entered or anything in his forgotten. entire life. He never entered That's, anything in his entire life. Okay. Injured. No. Um. He lied about injuring for sure. That's that shit know? is so that shit is know? stupid because out of that, he might he might have had that quick Dude. draw. No, gangster, doesn't matter. Gangsters, How do you know you injured? How do you know you injured? Shit. He no scoped able? that motherfucker, and he gave she him a, he gave him some Come experience, on. and that's how he knew he hit him. He got a you hit marker. That's dumbest, how he knows how, Matt. You, you must be the dumbest aliens in Earth uh, and in the whole universe. They're like, oh, I'm gonna go down to this planet. I don't know anything about this planet. I'm gonna stay here, and then a monkey shot me. I don't know anything about it, even though we have the technology. Yeah. Not only travel light years and light years and light years, but we're gonna physically present ourselves well enough in yeah, harm's way to be shot was- by by some fucking some ballistics. Of of what some um yeah some so what, if, some, what if they rock? thought we weren't some, as advanced some metal? as we are a metal's yeah, gonna, that's oh, they oh, would have man. observed it that's dumbass trust me that's, trust you guys, me people seem you to think you that yeah, he, he, he was dry you guys you guys oh. they're flying this spaceship he's like hey bro I gotta take a piss fucking tanks no. full and then they're like no. oh let's go stop on this stupid plane he's like it's a bunch of idiots running around. And then, like, then, then that's no, like saying that soldiers the soldiers that were um. Soldiers that are in the middle of a battlefield, they're just like, hey, bro, I'm going to take a piss without my weapon. Uh, watch me back real quick. All right, man. And no, then he gets no. shot. It's like, fuck, man. Here's no, a perfect people analogy. Seem to, people seem no, to think a- that aliens are smart enough to sci- like sci-fi travel to our planet, but when they get here, they're like wild beasts that can't defend themselves. Maybe when they, they enter our atmosphere, they lose their weapon intelligence. They're weaponless. They on our how about they don't go to our atmosphere? How about if you have the technology to travel light years away, you don't physically go to the atmosphere. You don't physically go like, oh, there's a monkey that's not going to shoot me with a rock. You don't do that. Why would you they shoot the way to at aliens? That doesn't make any sense. I'm saying if you're smart enough to travel distance, you don't put your fucking life on the line there. You don't have to. You have robots. He might have thought he was safe. Physical ballistic like fucking. You don't do that. Plus, also, you study a planet before you go in there. And plus, you could probably be invisible when you when you enter an atmosphere like that. You probably be, you don't be like, hey, I'm just going to fucking throw myself and this planet. Oh, what's the bad taste like? I don't know. What's air like? I don't know. I'll suffocate. I don't know. I'm just going to fucking go there. And then you die. You just die because well, you don't understand the atmosphere the problem, and stuff like that. The problem that we're talking about is we're both just talking about hypotheticals. Hypothetically, if you could, oh, I, I shot an alien. That's like me. Like, oh, I shot God. I think I hurt him. You really think, for one, did you really shoot God? For two, did you think you actually hurt God when you shot him? No. And that's the thing is, well, aliens... What I'm, get, what I'm getting at is, like, we're both just talking hypothetically that... Hypothetically, hypothetically this guy was high. He be smart enough not to be shot, but that's not necessarily true. There's a bunch of people that are smart, smart in science situations, but are dumbasses in social situations. Well, and what situation... Yeah, but you can send for, them on an esca- excavation, especially... These guys are why light years you? ahead of us. Why? Why would you that? Aliens? Yeah. Why would our? Earth. Why would our top Physically. scientists be a lot smarter than ones that can travel through? Light our sci- years? Uh, the scientists we send Robots. into space are not warriors. Yeah, well, that's, but we that's also don't atmosphere. send them. We don't send them into battlegrounds. Like nobody goes we to a planet. We, we sent, we sent to them planet. to the moon, not knowing what was on the moon, and we're going to be sending people. Well, have we also sent them, them to the Mars yet? Well, guess what? We guess knew what? That we knew what was going on hey. there in the sense of like 
and we needed suits and everything else. We, we are need, still if somebody exactly. sends somebody into an, an inhabitable planet, and this is whatever, because like exactly. Like, let's not forget about Roswell and all that other stuff. This is whatever, unless it's just random alien races crashing onto our planet. And, like, and, then, and then it says they're dumbasses because it's like, wait, we crashed a ship there before. Let I, me I, add, I, let, me, let me add, let me add, we're still just a brothers. bunch of monkeys in space. A human hasn't put a foot on Mars yet. What has a couple robots? Yeah, easy, easy. I, I'm just saying, why would I, we put a human on Mars yet without a robot? We do robots I, I, for everything. That's smarter. That's it's smarter. Us, I'm aliens saying, are smarter. I, I think stupid. you guys are giving aliens too much credit. They might not no, be. I think, I think we're giving ourselves too much credit. If you have, think yeah, if you have no, that kind of we're thinking we're smarter than we are. Part, no, you'd be weaponized on an inhabited planet. You would you'd have be stupid to send a person on a planet drive, if you could do robots. Just because you could drive an advanced vehicle doesn't make you smart. I That's can drive. Not what it is. You are looking at it like it's, it's a vacation it vehicle. You're looking at it like somebody's you're, taking a vacation. This is a You're looking like shit like sci fi. You're they basically self projecting. It's a problem with sci fi. If they lost three movies. Hours, yeah, if they lost three hours, that means they were examined, whatever, which means they never hit them because they would have anticipated that. Like if they were Sci-fi dealing with movies. Well, yeah, I agree. I don't think he shot yeah. him. That's what you guys are arguing about. That's no, what that's what I'm saying. That there's no we're way that there was any. They wouldn't have he been. He could have shot been at them. Alien. I don't know if he hit him. No, 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 no. I don't think. I don't think there will ever be an alien that touches touch down on uh, on Earth. Physically, well, there's no fucking point. They can literally gain the stimulation from touching on our planet in a safe distance with just. Technology. I'm if you're piloting, they can feel the same. You can put a robot on. It's you can put a robot on Earth. You don't have to physically be there. You can literally upload information as if you were physically on Earth. But you don't have to do that. You don't have to put yourself in harm's way. At the same time, you not go to Earth knowing humans' weapons, yeah. knowing how dangerous they can be, how pilot, unpredictable they can be. You wouldn't you don't, pilot you don't. the Earth. You wouldn't pilot the Earth and then be done with whatever things because somebody but, sent you. It's not a vacation. That you're just yeah. driving. Dude. That's arguably, arguably, Disney Channel shit. Arguably, if like, you have to feel, feel the alien from the yeah, no, no. and he crash exactly. landed on our planet with no weaponry. Arguably, if you have the technology to, to live travel, on that. no, and arguably, if you have the technology to travel to Earth, light years, and you have that technology, you would never even visit Earth because it's beyond your pay grade. You have no idea. It's like you, your little fucking Chromebook. Their Chromebook tells you everything about Earth. Upload in your head. Oh, I've been to Earth a million times. Gone, gone. It, there's no point to even visit Earth. There's nothing for you there. So arguably, well, if you can even I, create those light speed, there's no point for you to physically touch down on Earth. It's all okay. make believe. It's all bullshit. Just saying. It says, I just wanna, I wanna fall, it says no. asinine as Fallout being all analog controls in a high tech future makes no I just, sense. I, I want to ground this one this one story out just for a second. Um, just the fact that whether he was taken, whether he shot something, that doesn't matter, but uh, maybe he saw something and then a government organization I, it, showed up. I would to, believe more than that. That's out. fine. You think yeah. that's possible? Like, yeah, there could have been of an anomaly and, like, he could have, like, fucking, like, thought he did something in the heat of the moment, heat of battle, adrenaline. At That's peak, more realistic. I don't time, believe he weapon, just fucking I is like, it. oh shit, what the fuck is that? Goes into fight or flight, thinks he loses time when in reality he was just running for a really long fucking time and he just shot blindly, didn't know what the fuck it was, thought he hit it, saw something, that anomaly was picked up by the men in black and they showed up and were like, hey, just forget it, bro. You think that could happen? That's fair. It doesn't say that Some, he said he, he for sure. He said he believed he hit it. There's no way of yeah. him in a And like any, yeah. anybody who's been in a very sh- like shit situation when your adrenaline fucking uh, spikes, uh, yeah, you are the sitting there shot. and it, it, it feels like time warps. It really fucking yeah, but, does. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, it really does. In, but in and, both directions, because in the in the moment, dude, where you're like slammed, when you I start to run in the moment, it's like time slows down, and then once afterwards, it feels like it speeds up. So it's like if it well, I was going to say when when I yeah. broke my wrist slamming into a car it actually felt longer than the actual impact there at that like but, when everything happened it was a lot faster than it did in my head sometimes yeah. adrenaline slows everything fucking that, down That's the problem with everything that we hear about this stuff is it is someone's interpretation of what they saw 
But um, also, here's the thing is, you can't send a uniformed party to do damage <laughs> control to pretend that something didn't happen. Like, yeah, dude. Not, not uh, now. Sure not that's now, but what, back then you might have been No, but able back to. then you couldn't either. That's exactly why they bring this up. That's exactly back then when they're like, some guys in black suits told me it never happened. It's like, obviously, yeah, it was still something you yeah, couldn't but do this back was, then. What year was this, 45? 45? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. That's like Nazi soldiers piling up. They're like, they're not going like to get us because they're A Jewish. lot of these took place like before the 50s when people I know, but did like wear what, suits. Yeah, but like, what, so yeah like, but like what you just said, these people are coming forward saying these people, these strange people in black suits rolled up and started telling us we didn't see these things or we did whatever. They literally say in their things that it was suspicious. Yeah. Like it wasn't un like yeah no like it exactly is not conspicuous at is. all. I'm I'm hoping that like if they still exist or if they ever existed, they've changed tactics by now. If they do, and exist, now they're just they walking into places looking like fucking hipsters. But I'm or saying that shit. that's what's <laughs> stupid. That's the dumbest thing about it is like you cannot be in uniform to try to convince somebody or to do damage control somewhere and pretend like nobody did anything by dressing up to be like in the middle of nowhere. You can't just be fucking sticking out like a sore thumb. You have to adapt to your surroundings. That's why I brought up ninjas. It's like everybody thinks ninjas ran around and fucking whatever with mass and everything. It's like a lot of them dress like farmers and other shit. Like they adapted a lot more to their politicians. Situation. A lot of ninjas were just politicians. It's just, yeah, I'm saying they adapted shit. with the surroundings that they had. They weren't yeah. in all black suits jumping yeah. through trees Wearing the fantasy of the romanticists throwing of kunais and shit that aren't yeah, even no. an actual weapon. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, samurais could throw ninja stars, kind of thing. They could throw. Weren't those. kunais actual digging tools and shit? Were they not? I have no idea with weapons? kunais. I I just know ninja stars. A uh, samurai could, can throw yeah, those. I, ninjas weren't. They're I, not like fucking shurikens. Ninjas I, didn't throw shurikens. Ninjas were just spies. Ninjas were politicians. They're farmers. They were everything else. They're people that you wouldn't expect with a weapon in their hand, and they could yeah. deliver messages kunais or they could deliver. Be, they can kill you. Yeah. See, kunais. They're just despite uh, Casey, contrary to popular belief. Danny Gordon was. Kunais were not designed to be used primarily. The next as one, Danny weapon. Gordon. What year was that? Yeah. I can't, I'm not kunais were it. tools and used uh, when used as weapons see. were stabbing and thrusting implements. So I, th yeah. I thought they were fucking. Farming things, they're knives. They, they're nice little knives. You just fucking stab someone in the neck. They were primary so, tools. So the next ninjas story... were just assassin. That's that's it. But okay. um, regardless of that, is um. Yeah, people put too much pride in um, a lot of, like, I feel like some of this alien shit, we would know. We would know. The well, government again, relays always, a little bit, but it's like, we would know. People that are being fucking uh, the abducted? Yeah. It's, and, it's, why not it's not. Um, there's been plenty of people in, like, Chicago and Washington and Still red yeah, all people still, that didn't fall dumb. for the the very strategic plan that the men in black had to be inconspicuous. Their strategical plan to not be noticed by the fucking public eye, even though they October were October seventh, nineteen eighty seven. Okay, so here's the next one. So, so nineteen eighty seven, Danny Gordon was a radio personality who became interested in a flurry of with County UFO sightings. Multiple people across the country claimed to have seen bizarre objects in the sky, and Gordon decided to investigate. Gordon became obsessed with getting photos of the objects, in including, one including at one time where an entire school bus of students saw the UFO flying over a shopping mall, and Gordon took the photos. Eventually, Gordon snapped a few photos at extremely close range that allegedly verified they were not of this world. However, strange things began to happen to Gordon. He received a phone call from a man who claimed to be ex-military and warned him that his research could cost him everything and urged him to stop for his family's sake. Gordon was also interviewed by two men in black suits who claimed to work for a magazine publication not long after the who claimed to work for a magazine publication. Not long after the interview, Gordon realized all of his photos were missing. He contacted the magazine for information and they claimed to have never heard of him, much less commissioned an article about him. Not long after, Gordon suffered a heart attack and his doctors warned him that all the research and stress was jeopardizing his health. Gordon gave up the story and was never bothered again. 
So, um, what you didn't bring up was the fact that they told the men in black came and told Gordon that he should think about switching careers and he was intimidated. So he started, um, critiquing other chefs and everything. <laughs> so he, oh, you <laughs> shut the fuck up right now. <laughs> you this fucking taste- idiot sandwich. <laughs> this what? tastes like shit. What this are tastes you? like I'm if two men in black came and told you I'm, your career is garbage and they're going to kill you if you don't switch. Where'd that come from, Ramsey? I, it's it's crazy okay. because Dang. I don't. The whole thing when it comes to aliens is like, yeah, I do believe there are aliens, but I don't think that they influence our government in the sense that. Why is it is if they are around, how can they influence them just a little bit to where they'd want to keep them up under wraps? Well, I think that's super barbaric. That's be that's below their technology. If you if you have the means to travel light years away, why would you be like, hey, bro, do it this way. We'll do it in secret. No, I'm saying the government way. isn't no, working no, no. with them. They're just covering them up. No, I would say that the aliens could actually infect their brains and make them do a certain thing if that's what they wanted to. It'd be easy. I believe if there was any alien contact, it was accidental like crashes. Like it wasn't intentional. Well, I think and that they're, they were dead on sight. They were de- well, they were dead on site. Like that's what I think. Like dead, I'm saying like, dead that on impact. They died on impact. And DOA dead more. on arrival. If you have yeah. the technology to travel light years not away, why, why, why? If they well, are, then there's something our planet has to offer. I don't them think they're among us either. Of. I don't. I don't think they're among us. If it's oh, no, beyond, I, I've played Among Us, and it's definitely a real thing. If if people, yeah. If you have the technology to travel, if you have the technology to travel all this way, why don't you have the technology to manipulate? Who's to say their just, technology, they can travel light years. What if they're traveling just, they're faster traveling, but they're not traveling super quick and they just stumble upon us. It's just, so if you, if you guys look at that picture that's into the group chat, this is, it pertains to this, uh, to this next story. It's a, uh, UFO researcher Jack Robinson and his wife Mary began to experience uh, some strange events going on as they pursued more alien and UFO related research. They, uh, are you talking about the? Are you referring to the picture you sent to us with the Monopoly man coming out of the building? Yeah. So they they would come through, found the they house, the their house you. rummaged through. Their UFO files are all disturbed, and then uh, Mary started to notice a. Uh, man in a black suit staring up at their apartment doorway and she ended up telling a friend about it and uh the friend came to go check it out and i guess like i was standing there and that's where he took that picture and i guess that's one of the main one of the main proofs of the men in black but he also kind of looks like the witch from uh um what the fuck is it called wizard of oz you're talking about the guy coming out of the building yeah well i'm pretty sure that's uh oswald cobblepot (laughs) <laughs> you said we're going to Dan Aykroyd I mean when uh, I'm like I mean where where we grew up you know you deal with a lot of people you think are aliens and a lot of times they're just on one so you know I mean instead of take you to their leader it's take you to their dealer like come on man my True. family they need gas uh, I just need some money whatever I got this gas can so you gotta believe me no, brother, I know what you're doing. I've seen you here a thousand times. I've seen you on the other side of town. I just gave you also seen you in the back. <laughs> also seen you in the back of AM PM drinking, you know, right in the area where kids from Central Middle School come fucking walking out of. <laughs> so you <laughs> can't lie to me, brother. I appreciate the hustle, but also, you know, why don't you just be truthful? I was trying to get a beer. And some meth. It's harder for me to believe things like that when you fucking when you've spent your entire life around liars. <laughs> like, so when people like say these fucking weird things, like it's just like with the fucking what was it, the Yeti or Bigfoot thing, whatever it was, where the guy is fucking doing the nine one one call and he sounds like he's fucking off his fucking ass, like belligerent. It's like, bro, dude, I know people like this. Sounds like my uncle. Like, I, this is not fucking believable fucking content here because it's like, 
when do you ever call fucking sober or fucking recall anything that doesn't sound like asinine when you fucking spit it out? I would think if there was some government program trying to like kind of stop you and learning shit, it would be like or something like <laughs> interdimensional or like multiverse shit. Space wise, I think you know, we hit the ceiling with that is um we'll know when we know kind of thing. And I don't think the government can stop us because, you know, if something is so powerful that it can travel light years away, it doesn't give a fuck about politics with our government. Our government has nothing to offer. It can't make deals. It can be like, hey, I, hey, I can agree with that. Sen- I can agree with that sentiment to an extent, but I feel like we're giving aliens too much credit. So, uh, Casey, I, I kind of want you to read the Dan Aykroyd thing. <clears throat> Dan Aykroyd has come forward with a story about how he was taping a show about the paranormal. <laughs> He stepped out to take a phone uh, fucking thing. He stepped out to make a phone call uh, from or take a phone call from Britney Spears who was asking him to appear on Saturday Night Live with her when he noticed that a black Ford parked across the street. A tall man stepped out of the Ford, stared him down. Ackward turned away for a moment and then turned back to find the man and the car have completely vanished. After he finished his phone call, he returned to the studio to learn that the show has been canceled and he's been ordered to stop filming immediately. Some doubt his claims, but Ackroyd says he knew what he saw and the mountains were some kind of connection between, or, and he maintains that there was some kind of connection between these MIB and his paranormal show. That's hella funny. He was shooting a paranormal show and he fucking got shut down. <laughs> Dude, he's hella into the paranormal, if you didn't know. He wrote Ghostbusters, in case you didn't know. And uh, he wrote that based off of his, his, his family and ancestors and stuff, who has been, in, been like paranormal detectives and shit all of his lives and stuff like that. They've been, his entire family's been into the paranormal. Like, the Ghostbuster, Ghostbusters was a nod to his heritage. You know, I feel like I've heard this story before, but I'm not sure. Like, dude, if you watch the making of Ghostbusters, it's very fucking interesting just because of um, how much Dan Aykroyd to, uh, has been to the paranormal. I listen to This Is Important, the, the Workaholics guys, their podcast, and the one character, uh, Durs, because they always joke that he doesn't cry. <clears throat> he said he teared up in that the uh, the new Ghostbusters movie because of one... I never watched it, but oh, he said because so of one... Because of one scene, I, I think it was like a nostalgic, like whatever thing. Yeah, he teared up in it. You should watch the new Ghostbusters. It. It's good. I can't it's even remember good. the original. Like to oh, be honest, I watched it, it when I was a kid. The first one's really I good. Watched I watched the, the second one a little. Series. I watched the card actual movie. Yeah, but the new Ghostbusters. I mean, Paul Rudd is amazing in it, even though like. He doesn't have the blood is part. amazing and fucking everything. Yeah, they brought is. it up in community. Jeff said um, something that's like something about it's like Paul Rudd. He seems whatever, but I'll never like watch him or something like that. Oh, yeah. And it's like <laughs> it's like, dude, Paul Rudd is amazing. Again, again, in like community, I think that just goes into the fact that Jeff is insecure about the way he looks. <laughs> yeah, there's the insecurity. Paul Rudd doesn't, it, doesn't age. and He's a very handsome man. So I imagine that's why. Uh, he Aaron, dude, I don't him. think I've ever watched a Paul Rudd movie that I didn't enjoy or TV show because he was who Phoebe married at the end of Friends. Yes, he was Mike. <laughs> yep. So they and say the the MIB can be a, a numerous of things. Indeed, it's one hundred percent Paul Rudd's crew. He never. One of which it was. It's just angels. Paul Rudd clones. Just yeah, that's all they are, and they wear sunglasses and black suits to distract you from the fact they all look like Paul Rudd. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're actually a, they're actually the I can get behind. <laughs> they're a PRIB Paul Rudd in black. That is what they are, and that is what the episode should be called. <laughs> 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 Guys, I don't doubt alien like whatever. I just I just no. don't buy that they're fucking defenseless. Whatever. I don't believe that they're roaming around not armed or not taking precautions. I believe in accidental fucking whatever because nothing is perfect. The universe is not flawless. It's all by accident. And I don't believe that fucking people are as, or aliens would be as dumb enough to get caught and not be armed. I believe they would kill things maybe if they got caught or maybe not. I don't fucking know. But they say the MIB can be one of many things. 
Blosive. One of which, uh, <laughs> uh, we talked about he called one you of them blosive. already. Yeah, and I, I get called blows of one. <laughs> oh, do you? It's a, yeah, he, he used to blow a lot of people, and that's how you get the nickname. No, it's um, a very generic that, name that, that literally I get called problem. everywhere I go. People go blow or blows of. Yeah, because you're always blowing everyone. That's why I just said. Anyway. Yeah. Actually, um, John used to call me blow all the time. No, uh, so. We already talked about one of them in depth, you know, the United States government or any government, you know, of the world, like secret government. Casey, you have no room to talk about any of this, dude. You are a scroll in disguise. Hush. Fun, Nick. And, uh, no, uh, and then they say, you know, it could be aliens this is trying to just come back and cover up their previous, uh, I can't hear you, Joseph. You cut out. I'm talking to my kid right now. Oh, uh, okay. But uh, they say it can be aliens coming back to cover up their tracks from previous visits, and they're just trying to erase their their history. I could believe that. Or some believe that the men in black are actually androids or humanoid robots, and that's why they lack human emotions. They uh, they have strange mannerisms, and they all look the same. Yeah, and the. Uh, I could believe that too, actually. And that's why they just like like all their because there's been accounts like people will be talking to the like the men in black people will be talking and it will sound like something rehearsed and then it sound like they're like trailing off like their batteries are dying you know like you're like yeah. Ugh. I actually met a couple of people like that. Yeah, it's probably fucking androids. <laughs> Well, you're usually getting weird things like, um, it's getting uh, weird. One of the like off brand fucking candy that nobody buys these days. It's usually old white dudes. It's like, uh, peppermint patties, which I fucking love. Are they called peppermint patties? You guys know what I'm talking about? Might as well just fucking eat some toothpaste and take a bite of fucking chocolate, bro. Yeah, they're just, uh, well, I love I know, I know what they I are. Love, they are good. Yeah. They are good. I was just, that was a line from a fucking, okay, like, oh, I no. love, uh, that, mint there's a line from a movie. Favorite. Mint chip ice cream is fucking dope. Yeah, it is. Like but that's yeah, one of the best. That, that's one of the best. But I get that, or people ask if we have Charleston Chew and then other fucking shit. But it's like usually old white dudes, and not really like old white women. But it's like old white dudes, and they trail off when they talk. Have a good day. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, as or, far as um, being accurate, thank you. And go, they're like, like it's uh, very vague, yeah. but I could believe it. It's, it's like very, have a nice day, and they're like, uh, you bet. Uh, yeah. And they just like drain, like, like they're running on E and they walk out. Yeah. But as far as the Dan Aykroyd story goes, I could believe it only because I know Dan Aykroyd's family's background that he was actually into a lot of paranormal stuff. Um, but other than that, it is very vague and it could, it, anybody could have pulled across the street from him, in my opinion. I don't believe anything with actors. Like, their entire career, they get paid to pretend. Yeah, that's, that, you you right there. You right. But I'm, yeah. not, I'm not doubting alien activity. I'm just doubting most of the fucking people that say shit. Dude, yeah. like, I, I spent my entire life with liars. Things just don't ever seem to add up. It almost feels like a sixth sense. When you hear something, you can tell it's BS. But I mean, then again, it's not always true. Humans are flawed. You know, we're not always right. Yeah. What What about All you, All the Casey? time what we're you, wrong. What do you think about the whole Dan Aykroyd situation? I'd, <clears throat> Casey's like I'd say it probably. I'd not. say I'd say it probably happened. Yep. Especially if he was already in the middle of filming his show and he walks outside, happens to see a guy and goes back inside and he's canceled right then. Yeah, that is kind of interesting. Um, it's also something but, you would... But what, also, what about... Because I know me and me and Joseph... Right, go ahead, Joseph. Sorry. I was just going to say that's also something somebody would say to not admit that the show failed. But. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's you, guys, just, you guys realize like more shows have failed than they have not. Like a lot yeah, of shows don't yeah. even meet past pilot. You guys you, realize, like you guys know that Hillary Duff, uh, how I met your father. That wasn't the first take of that. The original one had Andrew Santino in it and it got canceled. Before oh, that the probably would have been dope. Yeah. He was a, he played a, a, a gay character in it. 
and the That's network actually, actually nice said he wasn't allowed to, um, because they kept jokingly, whatever, him and the other guy, they said they weren't allowed to do the stuff. And it's like, well, I don't get it because it was like, you're allowed to be gay, but you're not allowed to be intimate, which made no oh. sense. It was a really fucking stupid thing, but the show got canceled before it even, before the pilot was even like released. Like they, they filmed the pilot but it was that's never the like same case. That, that's the same case with the Bing Bang Theory. The original pilot never fucking made it because yeah, the original that chicken played show, Penny. That yeah. 80s show only made it at, what, like an episode or two. I don't even think. Yeah, something I don't know. like that. I was when like, Howard I literally remember the first episode of it. I thought it was stupid because yeah, I was a little kid and I seen someone with a mo like a colored dude, mohawk. Dennis and I was just from like, Always Sunny dumb. was the main character. Oh really? Yeah. Not kidding. That's hell. Den- Dennis from Always Sunny. He was but supposed to be like the Eric Foreman type character. Shows get fucking canceled all the time, and actors always say it's because this and that. Yeah. No, but like, I I believe Joseph's thing quite a bit. But what what do you think, uh, Casey? About the Men in Black. About Dan Aykroyd's Men in Black situation. Then we'll get back to the Men in Black as a whole. Well, he said he believed. Oh uh, no, yeah, I said I, I believed it. If he went outside, okay. And- I just I rebuttaled off of what Casey said. Okay. Well, as a whole, what do you I think of the Men in Black? I can't percent say that nothing's whatever. I'm just, I always just spit the piece that I'm, that I believe. But it's like again, you always got to leave room to believe that maybe because you know there's, there's an infinite amount of possibilities with fucking yeah. everything. Like I believe like hardly with a lot of my shit, but I can be persuaded not to. It's the same thing with the fucking. Um, the Kurt Cobain thing. Like, I believe strongly whatever, and then when I fucking actually sat and fucking thought about it, I was like, you know what? I actually think that it probably was an inside job. Like, yeah. I strongly <laughs> believe it wasn't. I thought it Did was, you like, watch stupid. the documentaries, or were you just thinking about it? No, when you said the one thing, and I wasn't thinking about it, and then after it was like, oh, it was locked. Front. No, it was like, whatever, like the door thing. It was, ba- it was and then barricaded, like, yeah. Yeah, and then thinking about it and everything... I was like, maybe it was a fucking inside like job. Yeah. Like it would make sense. Dude, then, did you see that comment? Uh, yeah, that yeah, yeah. No, and then that, that com- dude that and was then, like, yeah. And then that comment is like, if she really did, I didn't actually look into it. Yeah, so he compared it, it to a false. mob boss. Like, if yeah. the, the person it could be false. Commented. It could be whatever. Yeah, like, I never did research on it. But if she really did get all that fucking whatever and all that crap, yeah, then it's like maybe it did happen. It's like it's. Nobody fucking knows for sure. Yeah. You'd be strongly I, opinionated about anything. Yeah, I like that comment. I thought it was it was uh, very beneficial to to yeah. that conspiracy. But it's like you're not an evolving human being if you can't look into things and change your mind about things. It isn't yeah. being a hypocrite if you decide to change your mind. It means that you actually are open to other possibilities. And most people aren't. So you get a bunch of fucking ignorant rednecks who uh, consistently think that um, gas tank pumps are liberals is why their cards won't work. Like, you can't. Mm-hmm. No, people but, uh, that are so to, fucking to get, into their ideas, they think yeah. of ridiculous bullshit that makes to no get, sense. To get, away with, to get away from that, what do you think of the, the Men in Black as a whole? Do you think it's a real organization? I don't think it's a real organization. I think there might have been like a crew that was trying to cover shit up if there was aliens, but I don't think they were running around in fucking matching outfits and matching fucking cars to make themselves stand out. That just seems ass. So you think what it could have been like a group of like the same five people every place? No, I'm saying that it wouldn't have been an organization all dressed like they didn't have a fucking attire. I, I'm saying that it could have been a whole organization, but they were running around in appropriate attire for their surroundings. They weren't pulling up in certain cars. Mm, yeah. They were picking up like the, the boys TV show. They seem more inconspicuous than the boys comics where they run around in black trench coats doing everything. Yeah. I actually right. have no idea if they started wearing black trench coats in the show. Just too. butcher, just butcher. Yeah, so in the comics, how that's their, like, fucking outfit. It's like they're yeah, standing every, out yeah. like sore thumbs. But in the TV show, they seem like ordinary people, which may, it seems more realistic than the comic book counterparts who all run around in black coats, and they're very well known specifically as the people they are, which is cool in that element that, oh, be beware the boogeyman, but also a uh, better element in the show, in which case you don't know who the boogeymen are really like you yeah, do, but you don't. Sure. And it's um, like, you can't, 
if you're running around in a fucking outfit that makes no fucking sense to me. So it's like maybe a guy approaches you in a fucking um in a fucking collared blue shirt or whatever the fuck they're wearing in the fucking sixties and be like, Hey, so you seen some whatever and it's like maybe you didn't see it, maybe whatever. Like somebody yeah. that's trying to convince you and be threatening, but at the same time not raising awareness from the crowd. Yeah, I feel like, like even if they're approaching your house, the, not all these like people the official, are living in the middle the of nowhere. Official looking suit does help with the suppression, though. I don't think it does because it draws attention. People are like, "Yeah, I remember people in a black suit going to their house." People ain't gonna remember a regular car driving up and somebody coming in and going into their house, like knocking and then asking to come in. Like people aren't gonna recall that. Humans don't work like fucking uh, Law and Order. It's like. Yeah, like a Starbucks worker. It's like, yeah, I remember this guy came in. He was wearing regular <laughs> clothes. Yeah, whatever. I thought it was really weird. You know, he comes in yeah. every day for this fucking latte and whatever. But, you know, today he seemed uh, very specific, like specifically ominous this day. Like nobody's yeah. going to know that. If you don't stand out, you're not attracting the crowd. I don't know if you guys ever seen those videos of people doing distractions and stuff and then having someone fake mug somebody and then them asking to describe the person they can't because the way that they do it, they blend it so well. And these are just random people on the streets making these videos. So why couldn't the government do the same thing? Why couldn't yeah. a group do the same thing? Why be whatever? There's literally groups. They make Ugh. videos of fucking showing how people cannot specifically remember details of people when certain events are going on. You ain't going to remember somebody in a black suit. And these people never, almost never fucking get the details right. Yeah. Of the person that like mugs the person because they throw enough elements in the background that they're describing elements of people that aren't actually f like that aren't the person of question. Yeah. So why can't they do that? It's called, uh, what is it called? Um, it's like magicians do it all the time with a slight of hand. Misdirection. Yeah, yeah, misdirection. It's misdirection. So why wouldn't they do the same fucking thing? Just a bunch of guys in black suits. It's like, yeah, a bunch of guys in black suits came there. It's like, yeah, my neighbor's seen it too. A bunch of guys in black suits came and told me whatever. It's like, yeah, dude, nobody's not seen these guys pull up on the fucking, in the driveway and come and start asking questions. Men in Black makes more sense than that does because they have a mind erase fucking button. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know uh, if the real Men in Black has a neuralizer or not. Yeah. I, I do yeah. want to know your, your, uh, in, well, they don't your because opinion they must... on this, Casey. Oh, dude. The Men in Black, I don't know if they're a government agency per se. Or literally Men in Black. But... But even if, okay, so even if they, okay, so let's say there was a government men in black section. Maybe they do have actual agents that go out there and actually threaten these motherfuckers. Yeah. But then they have these uh, bullshit agents that they send out to, like, here, go, go <laughs> over there and uh, threaten the these new, people the publicly. Newbies, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Threaten these people publicly so nobody believes them. And yeah. uh, then they go over there, they go over there. With their shaved it. eyebrows, uh, weird right. facial expressions, no hair. It's yeah. looking like goddamn lizards and shit. Yeah, it yeah. makes no, I, but it I believe, make no I, I, sense because it's like their job is to not cause alarm, but they're yeah. causing alarm. I don't, I don't necessarily believe that they were like an actual organization, I, like its own organization. I don't believe that. Feel like it probably would have just been a part of the CIA or something like that. I, I don't, don't believe it would be but a like, organization. Well, yeah. But like, I feel like if they As were to send people out, monster. they would kind of send them in black suits just to intimidate. But like, then again, they would wait until like nighttime when no one would fucking notice and they just fucking show up in the middle of the night in black suits looking super official, be like, you're not going to say shit, motherfucker. And then they'd fuck off. So people wouldn't see them anyways. There'd be like a mob, it would be like a mobster tactic, you know, where they get them when they least expect it, when no one's around. But that's the only thing. And I feel like the, the black suits would help. I feel like the black suits would help to intimidate, but that's the only thing. But yeah, I feel like they would have to blend in. I agree with both of you to an extent. It's just like, I do, I, I do feel like the, the matching suits and stuff like that would help to intimidate people. Cause if a motherfucker just shows up in like a blue shirt, like you said, and just starts talking to you, be like, fuck off, dude, leave me the fuck alone. If they look official, it'd be a little more intimidating. I don't know. 
Yeah, but you're not disarming a situation if you're threatening someone into submission and they're constantly reporting it. It's mm. just, it makes no sense. And then, yeah, like, but if you, if you look gangs, like you're from the government and you say you're from the government, mob, mob, like mob members know. wouldn't leave witnesses. So why would the government, if the government's the most wicked thing, why are they yeah. leaving witnesses? But, you know, the mob never does. Well, that's what I, well, I, I, well, I, I said. That. If they started killing off everybody that was making a claim, they're going to be like, uh, everyone's going to be like, well, that's pretty fucking weird. Everybody who keeps saying they see yeah. aliens, they're all of a sudden Yeah, dying. but if you're killing them before they can really fucking retaliate other than a couple of people before it makes a whole news thing. By the time they actually... Yeah, but yeah, but by the time that they say something, then they're also saying this guy came. Yeah, not even twenty four hours later. I said something well, to my no. next door neighbor, and dude showed up. Well, like no, it's so like a lot of time they had contacted people around them first and told told them about it. Like, it's otherwise yeah, the government it, would have like, found out. With this shit, then you also got to remember. Okay, the McKennedy thing. There's no conspiracy around that then, because if we can't if. If we get caught with the fucking thing with presidential thing, how do we not get caught with alien stuff? Like, it doesn't make any sense. The assassination was an inside job with the president because look at the men in black. If we can do that with alien disappearances, we can make a president disappear without it going to the public eye like that. We could have made it mafia related and everybody would have just assumed that the Kennedys yeah. were deep into mafia ties and the government had no tie to it. But yet everybody sits there and it's like, there's mafia ties. No way. It was an inside job. No way. This and that. It's like, no, if they can cover up alien behavior, then they can cover up the Kennedy assassination by just tying it in with mafia ties. They had Jack Ruby come, whatever they could have easily said that he was paid off by the mafia to silence him before he could say anything about that fucking like that fucking whatever that suit, that whatever. Yeah. Like mafia shit. It's like we, we forget, like people forget this. Conspiracy theorists, a lot of them, their ideas contradict one another. It's like, why is this more fucking public and this isn't? But they believe in both. It doesn't make any sense because if it's all different fucking cogs in the machine, then that means they would all be equally fucking secretive or one would come out whatever to not dispose the other one. That makes sense. But it's like, oh, the Kennedy assassination will let people think whatever while underneath it, we're capturing fucking whatever and intimidating people not to talk about aliens. Like, to me, it doesn't make any fucking sense unless it, there's a bigger cover up and it's all fucking connected. We let certain stories ride out so we can distract people from this story and everything else. We assassinate Kennedy, not because anything that's fucking whatever, it's all false shit, but we let them believe it because we're trying to cover up this alien shit with the men in black. Yeah. Anyways, uh, it all have to be tied in for I, me to that's believe. That's the problem I have with this one is I agree with both of you quite a bit. Like this one, I am very middle of the line on this one just because I don't trust the government and I don't want to trust the government. And I feel like they would do shit to cover it up. But then again, like you make a lot of good points with the matching and a bunch of bullshit like that. So it's like, I am very centered, but I don't, do it. it's, it's like, I sound like I don't believe the government does shady shit, but I do, but I don't believe it's on large. It's not <laughs> large scale media attention. Like it is with stuff. If they're covering yeah. shit up, we haven't seen it. And if we have, then that means the government is as dumb as fucking the rest of the American fucking people are. Yeah. Do, Not do you every think, American's dumb. I'm do you just, think the, that we've tackled this sufficiently? Because I think Casey probably has to get going, and I'm feeling pretty tired. Because he said I, 10 I, minutes ago, like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> he said 10, I have like 10 minutes, like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, he said like 15 before we had the whole fucking... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was trying to finish it out, but I feel like we got some good conversations in. What do you yeah, think, definitely. Casey? Um, definitely. So, so you think that's a good place to leave it, Joe? Yeah, I, I, I've said everything I can say. Yeah, me, me too. Like, I've, I've said I, my words. Yeah. So, uh, thank, thank you for listening. We got a little heated tonight, which happens occasionally, y'all know. Um, but you know, keep listening. We'll have more streamlines episodes and more arguative episodes. Who knows how we're going to be next week. It'll be a fucking mystery. I'm going to 
give a shout out to the Star Wars Satan. He's the one who uh, was the first person to comment on our YouTube video. Yes, and, and thank you for that, good sir. Yeah, thoroughly appreciate it because, I mean, it's one of the, between that comment and Mike's um, thing is what made me start thinking and reassessing my uh, my opinion. <laughs> so, I mean, first it was the Mike thing, and then that too, it kind of solidified the opinion that I, I think it's more than likely an inside job. Definitely. 